This is heartbreaking as ex-Celtic and standout from the Olympics, Gershon Yabusele has finally secured himself a deal in the NBA after a stellar performance, but with the Celtic rival, the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, a lot of Celtics fans were inclined and in wanting to bring back Yabusele with that last roster spot. So we're going to be diving in and looking at why that wasn't the case and why he got a deal with the Sixers and how that will look for this Celtics team. All of that and more on this episode of Celtics Digest. I'm Bruce Velez. You guys have been absolutely killing it, showing your love, showing your support on the channel. So if you want to make sure you stay up to date and getting these updates on Celtics news, hit that like button to stay in the algorithm. Without further ado, though, let's dive into the topic at hand. Make sure to grab a snack. And like I mentioned in the introduction, we're going to be breaking down Gershon Yabusele as he is now signed with the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, for many fans that don't know who Gershon Yabusele is, he is an ex-Boston Celtic where he was selected 16th overall in the 2016 NBA Draft. Now, this draft also had the Celtics taking Ante Zizic and um, a bunch of other players that a lot of Celtics fans were very wary on in their selection process. Now, personally, Gershon Yabusele wasn't a standout player for the Boston Celtics and had to go back overseas, but... As we can see from Sham Sharania, he had a standout performance in the Olympics to bolster him an NBA comeback. As we can see, Gershon Yabusele is in serious talks on a deal with the Philadelphia 76ers, league sources tell The Athletic. With Yabusele resolving his $2.5 million contract buyout with Real Madrid as he enters an NBA return. So my guy is getting bought out and will be coming over. He helped lead the French national team to the silver medal at the Paris Olympics, where he averaged 14 points and was receiving some significant interest from multiple teams in the recent weeks. The 2016 number 16 overall pick is on the cusp of joining the Philadelphia 76ers after being in Boston from 2017 to 2019. Now, for those Sixers fans, for those people that, you know, are in Philly, you guys have gotten an absolute beast in Gershon Yabusele. Maybe not be able to show that with the Boston Celtics, but in this run with the Olympics, with Team France, he showed he could be a dominant force and a big difference maker for that team. Like we mentioned, he averaged 14 points, but if we want to look at his stats here, we can see that he was a solid contributor for this squad, averaging around 14 points, 3.4 rebounds, one assist, and also at getting that huge dunk on LeBron James. But if you want to look at the last couple games in the group play, he was solid, had one game where he did average 13 points. But this man came to life when it mattered most. When France needed him, they needed him to get some baskets, needed him to be a difference maker for their squad with Rudy Gobert not being that dominant. Yabusele was that guy. Versus Team Canada, he got 22 points. Versus Germany, the team that was 3-0, and oh, he got 17. And then versus Team USA, even though they did lose in the silver medal, he got that dunk on LeBron James and still had 20 points as well. All on solid shooting percentages as well from the field, from the three-point range. My guy can go out there and stretch that basket for all of those people that are wondering what my guy Yabusele he can do. He can do it. He's going to be a guy that is going to be bringing some great versatility for this 76ers squad. Now, you might be questioning, kind of wondering, why wouldn't the Celtics be interested? Why wouldn't the Celtics go after a guy in Yabusele? He obviously had played with the Celtics from 27 to 2019, and he did tell Gary Washburn from the Globe at the Olympics to tell Brad Stevens to bring him back. He wants to come back to this Celtics team and that he would want a roster spot. And honestly, I was kind of shocked that the Celtics didn't show that much of interest on, you know, our aspect. Now, there were multiple teams, you know, engaging and trying to get a deal done. So who knows? Maybe the Celtics were one of those teams behind the scenes doing something to try and get Yabu Sele over here. But ultimately, it did not happen. Truly, I don't think that's the case because I think if Boston really wanted him, if they wanted to get their last roster spot filled with a guy like Yabusele, they would be able to do so. And he'd be another guy that you could implement into that front court alongside Tillman, Horford, Porzingis, um, Luke Cornett, Nemius Keita. And he could be a guy that kind of develop, learn that power forward position along behind Al Horford. And maybe he could get back into that speed and up to up to speed that the Celtics, you know, kind of saw him in 2016 when drafting him. Ultimately, 
That wasn't the case. Celtics did not get him, and the Sixers did end up getting him, which is a rival of the Celtics, which, you know, does sting a little bit. I want to wish Gershon Yabutele the best over in Philly. I, you know, do believe in him, do think he can show us some great things over there in his revitalization in the NBA. But honestly, it does sting that he will be in Philly, and then we'll have to see that. But honestly, wishing Yabusele nothing but the best of luck in his comeback to the league. And let me know your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section. We're going to kind of discuss and break down what this means for the Boston Celtics next. As we know, Brad Stevens still has that last open spot, roster spot open and available, and he most likely will keep that last spot open and available into the season. So I do not expect anybody coming on this Celtic team. I don't expect anybody from training camp, you know, earning a roster spot with this squad as well. I see them running into the season with 14. So that may kind of, kind of allude to maybe them not wanting to get involved with Yabu Sele, but with Yabu Sele, him joining this Philadelphia 76er squad is going to be solid for them. Now, the 76ers have made some nice touches around the edges and around side Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey to kind of, you know, bolster this team. They brought in Paul George. They re-signed Kelly Oubre. They brought in Caleb Martin. They brought in Reggie Jackson. They brought back Kyle Lowry. They drafted Jared McCain. And now they go out and get Gershon Yabusele, another guy who can play that power forward slash center position, mainly a true four, which the Sixers kind of really lacked with their lineup. KJ Martin isn't a really true, great true four. Ricky Council's a little bit of a smaller player playing that 2-3. And then when you look at their big man rotation, they got Adam Bono, who they just drafted, and also Andre Drummond as well. Those guys are more centers. So a guy like Yabusele could get some true run with this Sixer squad, especially how dominant he looks in training camp. I would not be shocked if Yabusele automatically integrates himself as that backup power forward, if not a key rotational player off this bench for this 76er squad, if not being that starting power forward. Now we could see, you know, Caleb Martin getting that nod because he does have that NBA level experience and has played that 3-4. But truly, I think Yabu is that true four that can play alongside Joel Embiid. And we saw that where he played alongside guys like Rudy Gobert and Victor Wembayama in the Olympics with France and looked stellar playing alongside those guys. So playing, pairing him against another big that is a dominant big in Joel Embiid, I assure that we'll see, you know, some similarities from his game translating over from that France national team. And he'll be able to seemingly fit right in. Also, if MB does have some injuries, you know, does have something going on wrong with him, they do now have some additional front court presence with Yabusele, with Adam Bona, and with Andre Drummond now to kind of hold over that position for Joel Embiid if he were to miss, you know, 10, 15, possibly even more games throughout the season. Honestly, this Sixers team is getting scarier day by day making these roster additions, and they're a team that is going to be, you know, making some noise in the Easter Conference alongside the Celtics, alongside the Knicks, alongside many others. And I will not, I will say this right now, I do fear that 76ers squad, now with these new additions, they do look scary. And it is going to be tough in the Eastern Conference. So the Celtics do have a plate, you know, coming at them. They do have some teams that are ready to go. But I do believe our squad is ready for this gauntlet and will make sure that they take care of it. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. How do you guys feel about Yabusele? What do you guys think this means for the Celtics, for the 76ers, and for Yabusele in the NBA? Honestly, very happy to see him back. He definitely deserves it after that terrific performance. Just letting you guys know, tomorrow we will be live at 8.30 a.m. with special guest Adam Taylor, contributor who used to work for Celtics Blog, now who works for, has his own writing place, the Celtics Chronicle, and also runs the Vitamin C's YouTube show with Tim Sheilas. Go check that guys out. Go check them out if you haven't already. You want to make sure you can stay up to date with everything Celtics. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Come for the stream tomorrow. It will be fantastic. You can ask questions. We're going to be breaking down everything Celtics. It should be a fun day. Like I said, thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of Celtics Digest. I'm Bruce Velez, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a great rest of your day, and go Boston Celtics!